Johnson. That St. Arnold Jansen was a man of prayer. He prayed a lot. He had many devotions. And uniquely, he, he crafted the famous quarter hour prayer. You cannot easily find that in other congregations. Every 15 minutes, you have to sell for your quarter hour prayer. Although, although today, no. Uh, hindi na ganon yung practice. But it's a challenge for us, no? It's a challenge for us to pray that during the day, kung hindi man every 15 minutes, as St. Arnold did, no? So amazing. Yung St. Arnold, when we look at the way he prayed, how much he prayed, it's really overwhelming. You might say, natutulog pa ba siya? No? Natutulog pa ba St. Arnold? Uh, it was said that um, he prayed the Stations of the Cross every day. Wow. I heard about that. He, was, he prayed the Stations of the Cross every day. Now, but when we, when we try to go deeper into the meaning of prayer and how St. Arnold Jensen prayed, it's not, we cannot just be lost in the, in, in the number of his devotions. In, Rather, we have to go to the core, to the essence of his prayer. And I believe that for St. Arnold Jansen, prayer is basically an, an encounter with the Holy Triune God. Prayer is communion with God. It is entering into an intimate, profound relationship with the Lord. And in that encounter, in that intimate relationship, friendship, communion, one desires to know the will of God and to fulfill it. There is, there is uh, when I was still a seminarian, I learned about this theologian who said that prayer is very dangerous. It is dangerous because when you pray, you do not change God. When you pray, you should allow God to change you. Kaya very dangerous, sabi ng theologian. Why? Kasi tayong mga tao, kuminsan, when we, we pray, siguro unconsciously, unknowingly, we want to, to let God or we, we want to ask God to do our will. Kaya hihingi tayo, okay lang naman humingi, sabi ni Jesus, ask and you shall receive. Pero kung minsan, baka na-exaggerate natin yung part na yon, Yung uh, asking God to do what we want, to do our will. But when we, the deeper we go in our prayer, we have to accept the, the truth that the most profound prayer is to tell the Lord, thy will be done. To ask the Lord, what is your will? And I will fulfill it. I will do it because I love you. Because you have, you have loved me first. Ikaw unang, unang nagmahal sa akin. And so when we look at St. Arnold, he was, when he prayed, he opened himself to the will of God. He was searching, he was discerning what God would want him to do. That is not easy. No? That is not easy. Uh, St. Arnold allowed himself to be disturbed by God. He accepted the possibility of being restless, of being taken out from his comfort zone. That is how he prayed. So when he prayed, he did not only recite prayers and formulas, he was essentially opening himself, his heart, to the will of God, whatever that would be. And so it is, that's why it is dangerous, because the will of God 
might not might be so hard for you as a human being. Now, during the time of St. Arnold, a persecution was going on against the church. That was the historical context. And yet, during such a time of persecution against the church, St. Arnold felt, he discerned, and he realized that God was telling him that Germany, the German church, should establish a mission house. And so, such, such, a, such a concern for St. Arnold was difficult to understand on the part of the other priests and the bishops. Because how could, how could Arnold Jansen care for the missions for other countries when his own country, the church in his own country, was, was in great suffering? There was this story about person who told St. Arnold Jansen, no? sabi, sabi niya, how can you, how can you, if your house is burning, should you take care or care for, for your neighbor whose house is also burning? Yun ang tanong sa kanya. No? Kung nasusunog yung bahay mo, nasusunog din ang bahay ng neighbor mo, tutulungan mo pa rin ba yung neighbor mo or unahin mo yung bahay mo? At Ang sagot ni St. Arnold, the answer of St. Arnold was, maybe our house is burning because we do not care to help our neighbor. Yan ang sagot niya. Kaya siguro nagsasuffer yung Germany, German church, kasi marunong lang siyang tumanggap. Hindi siya marunong magbigay. No? So it's a receiving church, not a giving church. Hindi siya missionary church. That's why the house is on fire. Yun ang sagot ni St. Arnold. No? If you come to think of it, no? why was St. Arnold concerned so much about what was happening in the other parts of the world? What was happening in many parts of the world? Well, people, many people have not yet heard the gospel of Jesus. Many people did not know Jesus and his gift of salvation and for saint arnold the situation of such people is far worse far worse than the situation of the people in germany kasi kung may persecution man pero at least kilala mo na si cristo mamatay ka man nakilala mo na si cristo and whatever happens to you even if you die if you trust in the Lord, you put your faith in the Lord and you're faithful to Him until death, you know you will be saved. How about those people who do not know Jesus and are living in the darkness of sin and the night of unbelief? Para kay St. Arnold, mas malala yung situation nila. So somebody, the German church, should reach out to such people even if they are in times of persecution. Remember the words of St. Arnold? Sabi niya, the first, the first and greatest expression of love for one's neighbor is the proclamation of the gospel. Not, not giving food to the hungry. Huh? It is the proclamation of Jesus. You know. The first and greatest expression of love for one's neighbor. Hindi yung, hindi yung material. Kundi may kita mo, the best gift we can give to us, the best gift we can give to others is Jesus himself and his message of love. Kaya gayon na lamang yung, yung restlessness is known. So he was discerning the will of God. He was never thinking the one to the he was not he was not fit to be down there so he was just spreading the news that mission house should be built and he tried to consult the bishops priests 
And there were different reactions, no? Yung isa sa mga reaction, no? Sa sabi ng isa, either he is a fool or a saint. Yung wala na si Saint Arnold na nakalis na. Either he is a fool or a saint. And it turned out that he was a saint. Only that it was hard to believe him because it was time of persecution against the church. But for Saint Arnold, these are his words, the most important thing of all is to do the will of God. That is what matters most for him. To do the will of God. Nothing else really matters. No? And so, when he realized, no, uh, because there was this bishop from Hong Kong, Raimondi, who told him, eh, hey, kung walang magtatayo ng mission house, ikaw na. Ikaw na. <laughs> ikaw na talaga. No? And St. Arnold, Discern that seriously, he was hesitant, of course, no? Kasi kilalangan niya yung sarili niya. And he was a man of great humility. So, But when he realized, after a careful discernment, that God was calling him to establish the mission house, he fully committed himself to it. Regardless of his human weaknesses and limitations, Uh, notwithstanding the obstacle, obstacles and oppositions that would come his way, no matter the cost. So, ganon, he surrendered himself totally to the will of God when he, he saw that it was God's will for him. No, It was not easy for him. It was very hard. No, I can imagine the, uh, the, the, the human... Natural naman yun pag tinatawag tayo ng Diyos. Parang, Lord, why me? Bakit ako? Meron namang iba dyan, mas magagaling. No? Mas talented. No? Magaling mag- may, may, may convincing power. No? Mas, mas, ano, mas mabait. Ganoon naman tayo pag tinatawag tayo ng Diyos. We, we, we see our unworthiness. But God chooses whom He wants. Wala yung masasabi natin na uh, wala, hindi niya maka-establish ng criteria na ginagamit ng Diyos para siya ay tatawag. Hindi, uh, yesterday we celebrated the solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul. We have this great example, no? Itong dalawa na ito. Yung first pope, no? A fisherman who denied the Lord three times. Uh, yung great apostle to the Gentiles was, was a persecutor of the church. Maraming namatay dahil sa kanya. And yet the Lord chose them. So, God chooses whom He wants, whom He loves. Hindi tayo makapag-establish ng mga kriteria natin na, ah, ito, ito talaga yung tinatawag. <coughs> no. Kahit practically, kahit sino pwede. No? <laughs> kasi, kasi para sa Diyos naman, walang imposible. So that's basically, no? Yung, yung faith because of because we walk by faith not by sight we believe that whoever God chooses if that person surrenders himself totally to the will of God and cooperates totally with God's grace that person will turn out to be a great instrument of God at yun si Saint Arnold nga alam natin nangyari no? nangyari sa kanya He became a great instrument, founding three congregations, missionary congregations. Ngayon, um, going back to that uh, time na si St. Arnold, he founded the, the mission house, the congregation, during time of persecution. It, we can really say that he was a man of great faith. No? Na he believed that if something was collapsing, kung yung church sa Germany nag In, in crisis, uh, in great trouble, St. Arnold believed that God surely would construct something new and much better. Pero siyempre, mahirap paniwalaan yun pag ang pananaw mo lang, eh, very human ka. Masyado ka, ikaw ay pragmatic, very worldly ka. Worldly, pragmatic, practical lang. When, when you're a man of faith, you cannot just be practical. You have to take the risk of giving yourself totally to God, even if you cannot understand. Even if trusting in God, even if 
accepting God's will does not seem to be practical, but rather crazy and foolish. But St. Arnold preferred to walk by faith, not by sight. He was a man of science. He was a, he was a mathematician. But much more than that, he was a man of faith. Much greater than yung science tsaka yung, tsaka yung mathematics tsaka yung mga uh, human disciplines. Far more important to him was faith in God. Kaya makikita niyo yung buhay niya. He, took, he, he was willing to take the risk. No? Ngayon, sa panahon ng COVID-19, I would connect this. Uh, itong time na ito, eh, nagko-collapse. We are in crisis. And many things are collapsing. No? Yung church, maraming sinasara yung simbahan. No? Merong persecution against the church. Uh, hindi, kaya, hindi kaya God wants to establish something new and much better. Hindi kaya itong COVID-19 is God's way of purifying humanity that is living in the darkness of sin and the night of unbelief? Do you think our world today is really that holy or less sinful than in the times past? Hindi kaya we are living in the most sinful time of history that God has to purify us and has to renew humanity radically? Anyway, that's a question I want to throw to you. So let us not fear. Anyway, we walk by faith. Let us not fear. Let us face this challenge and seek the will of God like St. Arnold. Ano bang kalooban ng Diyos? What is the will of God? Is it the will of God that we simply shut ourselves down? That we just hide ourselves in our rooms? That even if our neighbors are in need, we don't care because we are afraid of the virus? Is it the time that, that when somebody needs anointing, we will refuse? Ako, I take the risk. Of course, I take the precautions. I follow the protocol. But, <laughs> sa akin, mas mahalaga pa rin yung mga tao The people are more important than my own life. Bahala na kung magka-COVID ako. Pero ang tanong ko, Lord, ano bang gusto mong gawin ko? Should I live in fear? Or should I take the risk of continuing my mission as a divine word missionary? Trying to be open to people, to reach out to people in my own little ways. Saint Arnold surrendered himself to God's will. Taking the risk. Kahit nasabihin nilang, ah, he must be a fool. Never mind. No? In the end, it is God who will, who will judge us, not human beings. Yung second point ko lang. Second point is, so yung first is discernment, uh, openness, and total surrender to God's will. Uh, yung pangalawa, complete trust in God. That is so characteristic of St. Arnold Jensen. Complete trust in God. When he was establishing the mission house, he had little funds. Kokonti lang yung pera. But he went ahead. Because he trusted in the Lord. If it, it, he believed it, if it is the will of God, God will provide for what is needed. And on our part, syempre on the part of St. Arnold, he worked hard. He did his best. So hindi yung pagtitiwala niya sa Diyos, it is not a passive faith or passive trust. It is an active trust. He work hard. Kasi ganun yun eh, yung, yung faith natin, hindi pwedeng, ano tayo, tamad. No? Remember the parable of the talents. Hindi po pwedeng, God entrusts, entrusts to us His gifts, and then we don't, we don't do anything about it or with it. No. St. Arnold, teaches us that if we truly uh, want to do the will of God, if we trust in God, we also have to do our part. We have to embrace our responsibilities. 
And so it entails sacrifices, commitment on our part. St. Arnold was zealous, hardworking. I believe he's, he slept so little. No? Uh, he was devoted, so devoted to the mission which was being asked by the Lord from him. And his complete trust in God was tested so many times, especially when sufferings and trials came. na nung nagfa-found ng mga mission sa iba't ibang countries ano pag namamatay yung mga converts nagkakasakit no pag may mga problema na nirerelay sa kanya mga countless problems in the missions uh, St. Arnold in spite of those sufferings and crosses he continued to trust in the Lord and not only that very talagang he lived he lived what was in the scriptures no Ano yung isang bagay na very unusual na sinabi? Sabi ni St. Paul, sabi niya, give thanks, in all things, give thanks to God. In all things, St. Arnold practiced that. Because in all circumstances, even in trials and sufferings, St. Arnold, give thanks to God. At, at ano bang sabi niya? Sabi niya, yung mga crosses, Pain, sufferings, sicknesses, they are source of blessings. They are, they are prelude to God's great blessings. Wow. Diba? Yun yung Paschal mystery. No? Good Friday. Ang sakit-sakit na nangyari sa Good Friday. Very dark. No? Saturday. Pero after that, Easter Sunday. So, St. Arnold really lived the Paschal mystery in his life. He trusted in the Lord. No, he trusted the Lord with all his heart, even if, humanly speaking, he felt like quitting. He felt like surrendering. I'm sure na <laughs> sinasabi din niya yon na may mga times talaga na gusto narin niya maglive up. Pero by the grace of God, no? with God's gift of faith, hope, and love, no, because Saint Arnold trusted in the Lord who loved him so much. He persevered, no? Ano yung maganda yung words si St. Arnold? Eh? Sabi niya, God loves those who are grateful even in suffering. Ganda, no? God loves those who are grateful even in suffering. Ganun din ba tayo? Do we thank God when we're suffering? Let us be honest. Ako, I'm trying to learn to do that. And learning is hard, no? Kaya pag medyo may pain ako, sabi ko, Lord, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you because usually ang reason ko ba't nagpa-thank you ako, I thank you because huh, I have you. Because I know you are with me, you love me, and I offer this to you. Ikaw nga, naghirap ka. So I unite this pain to your, to your cross. And may this pain benefit somebody. So we can offer our pains for the conversion of sinners, for the salvation of souls. Remember si St. Therese of the Child Jesus, patroness of the missions. She did not leave the convent, but she offered everything, her prayers, her work, her sacrifices, everything, everything she offered for the missions, for the salvation of souls, for the salvation of God's people. Ganon din tayo, no? We can offer our suffering. And lalo na pag we are grateful even in suffering. Sabi ni St. Arnold pa, it is impossible. Impossible, ah? It is impossible that God will ever betray our trust. Yung mga tao, ibibetray pa tayo. Best friend mo, pwede kang ibitray. Ha? Pero, impossible para sa Diyos. God will never betray our trust. And St. Arnold is a shining witness to that. Yung third point ko, is St. Arnold was a man of really great humility. Well, St. Augustine was asked what was, the, what was the most important virtue, and he said, humility. The second most important virtue, he said, humility. The third most important virtue, humility. Si Padre Pio, sabi niya, humility is the foundation of all the virtues. 
yung kung sa bahay yun yung foundation, yung charity yun yung roof, yun yung bubong, charity, yun yung pinakamataas. Pero foundation is humility. Mahalaga kay St. Arnold yung humility because as Santa Teresa of Avila would say, la humildad es la verdad. Okay, in Spanish, no? Humility is the truth. Humility is the truth. So when you're humble, you live in the light of the truth. Kayo, yung mayabang, hindi yan nabubuhay sa katotohanan. Yung mayabang, he is deceiving himself na, in falsity and lies. At hindi yan, lalabas na sinungaling siya. Na? So humility is the truth. Saint Arnold, no? although he founded three congregations, he he always acknowledged that the work was God's. Hindi sa kanya. The accomplishment was God's. And that God alone must be honored and glorified. That he, siya isang steward, not the owner. That's why it is said that when people would praise nung na-establish na mga congregations and marami ng members and somebody tried to praise St. Arnold. Parang sinabi sa kanya, oh, say, Father Arnold, look at what you have accomplished. Ang dami na, nagbunga na. St. Arnold would not accept such praises. He would always no, point to the Holy Trion God as the one worthy of all honor and glory. Because he was truly a humble man. No? I can imagine kung si Saint, yung sa canonization niya, ha? kung nandoon physically si St. Arnold, I can imagine, baka nagbablush siya. <laughs> baka nagbablush siya dun sa canonization niya. Ako, ako, hindi, I don't, I don't deserve to be canonized. No? I can imagine his reaction. No? Kasi hindi naman, hindi naman niya ina, ina-aspire yung mga bagay na yon. He just wanted to do the will of God. And yung humility niya, alam niyo, it is shown in his dealings with others kasi yung yung humility hindi mo lang hindi makukuha yan sa ano lang sa words na ay hindi naman huwag niyo akong purihin kasi pwede naman kumisan ganun tayo ay hindi naman pero sa loob-loob natin natutuwa tayo na pinipraise tayo no or mayabang naman tayo sa loob-loob yung tinatawag na false humility but you know matitest yung humility ng tao natitest yan <laughs> pag 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 ikikritisize siya kaya kung kung gusto niyo ng matest kung gano, kung talaga humble kayo tanungin niyo sarili niyo paano kayo mag-react pag may nagre-criticize sa inyo ako honestly naging masumita ako kung minsan defensive ako kasi yung pa rin kung minsan yung ego no sabi ko lord oh, mayabang pa rin ako lumalabas pa rin yung yabang ko no si Saint Arnold hindi, of course hindi ko sinasabi na perfect siya nag-struggle din siya no as a human being pero I, 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 uh, may maraming makikita mo talaga sa maraming instances na he really showed that he was a humble man. Uh, he was willing to accept corrections. And they did that to him so many times. Meron yung isang instance, isang story, na, if I remember it well, kasi binasa ko sa si Spanish to eh, yung sacristan, I think it was a brother, na magpiprepare ng misa hindi pa niya na-prepare yung mga gamit. Dumating si St. Arnold, kasi time na raw ng Misa, nakita niya hindi pa handa yung mga gamit. Pinagalitan niya. He reprimanded the sacristan. No? Kasi hindi pa handa yung mawan. He reprimanded. Only to find out na advanced pala yung clock. Nagkamali si St. Arnold. Advanced pala. So, anong ginawa niya? Nung na-realize niya, nagkamali siya. Siya yung superior general. By the way, siya yung superior general. What, what he did was, he knelt, he knelt down before the sacristan asking for forgiveness. Meron pa bang mga ganyan ngayon na tao? Pag may taong ganun, santo po yun. No? St. Arnold did that. And he did not only ask for forgiveness. When he was being uh, uh, corrected, criticized, tinitignan niya, bakit totoo naman, no? And he patiently worked on his weaknesses. He patiently worked on that. He accepted 
corrections. You work on them. And that is true humility. Yung true humility, it is not just saying sorry. Ay, sorry ah. Tapos sabi nila, ang humble naman niya kasi marunong mag-sorry. Tapos mamaya, balik na naman. Ulit-ulit na naman yung ginagawa. That is not true humility. True humility consists in, aside from saying sorry, more importantly, you change your ways. You change your ways. Kaya nga naging saint si St. Arnold eh. Kasi hindi lang siya marunong mag-sorry. He changed his ways. Uh, he turned away from his sins. Yung, yung lack of charity niya. And then he learned to be gentle. He grew. He flourished in the, the virtues following Jesus, the divine word, the word made flesh. He became a saint because he uh, walked on the path of conversion and personal transformation. And that was possible, yung transformation niya, yung conversion niya. It was possible because of his humility. Yung taong mayabang, hindi yan makoconvert. Kahit magsusori yan, kahit magsusori, mamaya babalik pa rin doon sa ginagawa niya kasi mayabang. Pero yung totoong humble, magbabago yan. Kaya yung, yung, yung true repentance will lead you to conversion and transformation. Saint Arnold, beyond all the things he did and accomplished, was a mirror of Jesus, the divine word who became flesh, who is meek and humble of heart, and yet came to set the world on fire with his love. Saint Arnold, through the years, learned to be meek and humble of heart, no? And he was, he grew in the virtues. He became uh, a model of charity and love, and not only for, pe for the people of his country, but his love, no? Reached the farthest ends of the world. When he, he surrendered himself to the will of God, no? To, to establish the mission house, and through that house, to send missionaries to all parts of the world. Sabi ni St. Arnold regarding humility, no? Sabi niya, a missionary is not the light, but one who reveals the light, Jesus Christ. So, that is, those are words of humility. We are not the light. So we have, we have to do our mission, we have to do Christ's mission with humility. We are not the light. We are one, we're the ones who reveal the light, Jesus Christ. And St. John the Baptist would say, you know, I must decrease, he must increase. You know? So my dear friends, there are many things I can share, we can share about St. Arnold, but these are the three things I would like to share with you tonight. Pagalumampas siguro ako ng 30 minutes. Pasensya na po kung lumampas ako ng 30 minutes. Anyway, yung po yung pag-discern niya, openness and total surrender to the will of God, his complete trust in God, and he was a man of humility. May St. Arnold intercede for all of us that we too may always live in God's most holy will, that we too may trust we completely trust in God, especially in very difficult moments, in during times of crises and trials. And may we remain humble, even in the midst of successes, in, even in the midst of abundance. May we remain humble and always acknowledge that it is the Lord who really accomplishes these great things. We are his instruments. But how important it is that we not only be instruments, that we be good instruments. Good by striving for holiness, by allowing ourselves to be transformed by the Lord, by the divine word. Amen. So, salamat po sa pagkikinig Good evening.